Welcome to an overview of OPC alarms and events. After adding OPC alarm and event support to some of our software products, we decided to create this video to help users quickly understand the fundamentals of OPC A&E. This video is not specific to our products and is intended for anyone interested in learning more about OPC alarms and events. Excel has developed two OPC alarm and events client products. First, our OPC test tool allows users to test OPC DA, HDA, and OPC alarm and event servers. Our OPC A&E test client will allow you to investigate many of the topics in this video. TopView Alarm and Notification software supports many data sources, including OPC alarms and events. Users can monitor and log events for multiple OPC and alarm and event servers, send email, SMS, and voice notifications for specific events, remotely view details from desktop and mobile devices, create event reports, perform analytics, and much more. In the process and automation world, there are two main types of monitoring systems. In a tag-based monitoring system, each measurement or state is identified by a unique tag name. The monitoring system can create a list of tags to monitor, and the current values can be pulled or sent to the monitor. For measurement data, the system can determine if the data value falls within a desired range. In an event-based monitoring system, the monitor receives events about the process as they occur. Event details can include properties such as what happened and when. The monitoring system may filter out unwanted events based on the event properties. OPC alarm and events can be used for an event-based monitoring system. OPC alarms and events was created by the OPC Foundation as a standard for alarm and event delivery. It is vendor neutral. Therefore, any vendor following the standard can present an OPC A&E server. An OPC A&E client like TopView can subscribe to events and perform actions such as additional filtering, logging, viewing, and notification. Here is a partial list of OPC A&E server vendors. A quick overview of the topics in this video. It's always easier to understand a topic if you can apply the information that you are learning. For this video, we will apply the details of OPC A&E to a sample bakery facility and some of its alarms. We'll then dive into the details of OPC A&E events. We'll start with a summary of the primary event fields and their relationships to one another. Then we'll take a closer look at each event field. Lastly, we'll talk about receiving and processing events through subscriptions. Our example facility is a bakery. The bakery contains two buildings. Each building contains two mixers and one oven. The buildings, mixers, and ovens have names, which we will use to address them in OPC A&E. The mixers have alarms for low and high mixing speed. The ovens have alarms for low and high temperature, as well as rate of change alarm for temperature. Each incoming event contains fields. Each field is a property of the event. There are standard event fields, which are part of the OPC A&E specification, as well as optional vendor-specific fields. Most of the event fields are designed to answer the following questions. What happened? When did it happen? What type of event occurred? Where did it happen? And who generated the event? There are five event fields that have a hierarchical relationship that we are designating as the primary event fields. The OPC A&E server is responsible for defining the allowed values of these fields. Let's take a look at the primary fields, their relationships, and how our bakery facility defines the allowed values. The area field is a named grouping of sources. We have defined each of our buildings as an area. The source field is the source of an event. We have defined our mixers and ovens as sources. There are three types of events. The event type for alarms is called a condition. Our bakery is only generating condition events. Within an event type, the server can define categories of events. Our bakery has defined two categories of events, level for the high-low alarms and rate of change for the rate of change alarms. A category can only define conditions if the event type is condition. We'll now take a closer look at the event fields. There's three types of events. When people talk about OPC A&E, they're commonly talking about alarms, and that falls under the condition type. Tracking events typically involve an action taken. 
and simple events is everything else. Some of the event fields that we'll be discussing are only available for certain event types. The condition type has the most event fields. Category is a grouping of events supported by the OPC A&E server. In our bakery example, we have a level category for our low and high alarms and a rate of change category for the rate of change alarms. Each category contains a name, but internally there's both a name and an ID number, and the category names must be unique within the server. An area is a grouping of equipment. The available areas are defined by the OPC A&E server. In our bakery example, building one and building two are areas. A source is a reference to the object that generated the event. A source could be a process tag, a device, or a subsystem. The available sources are defined in the OPC A&E server. In our bakery example, the mixers and ovens are sources. Severity tells the urgency of the event. This can be a value in the range from 1 to 1,000. Low severities are meant for informational alarms, and high severities indicate critical issues. There are two time event fields. The event time applies to all event types and is the time that the event occurred. For condition events, the active time is the time that the condition became active or the subcondition changed. Because condition events may occur for reasons other than an active condition or change in subcondition, the event time and active time may contain different values. The message is a text string that describes the event. For condition alarm events, the message is typically the alarm message. Quality indicates the quality of the underlying data items upon which the condition is based. The three basic quality values are good, bad, and uncertain. As an example, a high condition event may be generated by a measurement value with an uncertain quality. The event quality would also be uncertain. Acknowledge required is an indicator as to whether or not an acknowledgement is required. OPC A&E clients have the ability to acknowledge a condition event. The condition and subcondition tell you what condition or alarm occurred. The condition is a named state and alarms are considered a special case of condition. In our bakery, high, low, rate of change up and rate of change down are single state conditions. The main purpose of a subcondition is to allow conditions that are mutually exclusive. If you have conditions that are mutually exclusive, they can be represented as one condition with multiple subconditions. In our bakery example, we defined four conditions. High and low are mutually exclusive, and we could have represented this as a condition named multi-level with subconditions high and low. Also, we could have defined a condition for rate of change with subconditions up and down. If a condition is single state, as they are in our bakery, the condition will have one subcondition whose value is equal to the condition. So you always have a subcondition value, even if subconditions are not defined. Changed indicates which properties of the condition have changed to have caused the OPC A&E server to send an event. The changed properties can include one or more of these properties, the active state, acknowledged state, enabled state, quality, severity, subcondition, message, or vendor attribute. New state indicates the event properties of the condition which are currently set or true. The new state can include one or more of these states, active, acknowledged, and enabled. New state does not indicate that an item just changed. It indicates that the item is currently true. As an example, an alarm condition may occur and then later be acknowledged while the alarm is still active. Two events arrive, one for the alarm active event and one for the acknowledge event. In both events, the new state value of active is true because the condition is active. In the second event, the new state value of acknowledged is also true. Now that we've looked at the event fields, let's look at receiving events. An OPC A&E client can configure one or more subscriptions. Each subscription defines the OPC A&E server, details of the desired events or a filter, and settings that define the details of event delivery. An OPC A&E client does not ask for new events from the subscription. An OPC A&E subscription creates callbacks to the client. As new events occur, 
the client's method for processing is called with the new events. The purpose of the filter is to reduce the number of events that are sent to the client. The subscription properties allow the client to control some details of event delivery. A few of these settings are requests that can be overridden by the OPC a &E server. As mentioned, the purpose of a subscription filter is to reduce the number of events sent to the client. The filter is optional, but if the client will ignore a majority of the events sent from the server, a filter should be specified. Five event fields can be used in the filter. Event type, category, source, area, and severity. Each filter field can specify one or more allowed values. The area and source fields support masks, where the allowed values can contain wildcards to match one or more characters. Severity is specified as an allowed range of values. Let's look at an example filter for our bakery using all five filter fields. The subscription should return all level condition alarms from ovens in building one and two with a severity between 500 and 1000. Level is our category. Supported categories are level and rate of change. The type of event is a condition event. The source is ovens. The allowed areas are building one and building two and 500 to 1000 is our allowed severity range. When creating a subscription filter, it helps to know the allowed values for the filter fields. For example, if I want to allow events from certain sources, it would help to know the allowed source names. If supported, the OPC a &E server can be queried for the allowed values of the five primary event fields. Four of these fields are subscription filter fields. If you try our free OPC a &E test tool, the subscription filter builder allows you to query this information from the server and copy it into your subscription filter. In addition to the filter, a subscription has a few properties that allow the client to control some aspects of event delivery. Active indicates if the subscription should receive events or not, allowing the client to turn the subscription on or off. Buffer time is the minimum time between sending of events to the client. Maximum size is the maximum number of events that will be sent to the client in one callback. Keep alive time requests that the OPC a &E server send heartbeat events if no real events have been sent within the specified keep alive period. This allows a client to know that the subscription is healthy even if real events are not occurring. Many OPC a &E clients are interested in alarm condition events. Once a subscription and filter have been configured, an OPC a &E client can start receiving events. Even after specifying a subscription filter that only returns alarm condition events, events may arrive due to conditions becoming active, conditions being acknowledged, and conditions becoming inactive. In an OPC a &E client, the user may only be interested in events where the condition became active. So how can a client analyze the incoming events to detect the alarm condition active events? First, configure the subscription filter to only send condition event types. If this has not been set, you can check the event type of incoming events. Next, check if the current state is active by looking at the new state field. Then check the changed field to ensure that both active and subcondition have changed in this event. So this logic is, Make sure we have a condition event whose state is currently active. It just became active and a subcondition just changed. Thanks for watching and we hope you now have a better understanding of OPC alarms and events. If you'd like to review the information in this video, we posted it on our website and as a downloadable PDF. Please visit the URL displayed near the top of the screen. Our free OPC test tool and free versions of TopView alarm and notification software can also be downloaded from our website, xl.com.